Do you want to take advantage of trader psychology, create an emotionless trading system, and improve your own trading discipline? Well, these three amazing books are going to do exactly that for you. I've created many videos in the past talking about risk management, trader psychology, and preaching that chasing chatroom alerts is probably going to set you back many, many years. But who am I to talk about psychology, risk, and discipline? I don't even have a Lamborghini. And according to most of the day trading marketing out there, I'm not a real trader until I have a few of those. So I must direct your attention to these three books that have changed my trading dramatically over the last few years. And they are Trade the Trader by Quinn Tetro, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, and Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'll be summarizing the key takeaways for me from these books and explaining to you how these books help me with trading emotions, trader psychology, and building a good trading discipline. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. Trade the Trader is written by Quinn Tatro. He's a hedge fund manager and founder of his own investment firm in Kentucky. Quint is always reminding us that when you're trading stocks, you're not just trading the companies like Tesla and Apple, you're actually trading against the traders and algos on the other side. And those traders' singular focus is to take money from your trading account, right? Somebody has to lose in the stock market in order for you to profit. And I do agree with him 100%. The reason most traders fail is because they don't have a firm understanding of that concept. Most beginner traders out there spend a huge amount of money and time trying to learn strategies, memorizing chart patterns, and looking for that secret indicator that will allow them to top tick and bottom tick. When in reality, we should be learning to trade the other traders who are trading against you. Remember, chart patterns are just a visual representation showing people's emotional decision to buy or sell. That's where we can see the big buyers, big sellers, and the bag holders are on the daily chart. Quintatro sums up this concept really well in the book by comparing day trading to playing chess, which I actually hope is not 100% true because um, I don't know shit about chess. But I heard from a friend that when you're playing chess, you're not really playing the pawns in front of you. You're really trying to play the players on the other side. Same thing as poker, right? You're trying to read the other players' gestures and emotions and understand exactly when they are triggered. In this book, Quinn Tatro explains the process of understanding the other side of the trade and how to outsmart the crowd in every single step. From picking the right stocks to trade to getting in and out of the stock at the psychological trigger point. Which are the price levels when you know the other side of the trade is in pain? If you've seen my past videos such as penny stock gap up long strategy or how to short penny stocks, you'll know that I always stress the importance of understanding when the other players are in pain. If you're long biased, you'll want to get in when you see that the shorts are being short squeezed and trying to get out. And vice versa, if you want to short a second day gap up, you you want to short into the overnight loans profit taking and the pre-market and market open chasers bailing out of a failed breakout. And that's exactly what Quinn Tetro is talking about in the book. You want to trade against the crowd, especially when the crowd is dumb money. Recognizing the difference between dumb and smart money is another key takeaway from Trade the Trader. And that's especially true when you're trading small cap penny stocks. The reality is that most penny stocks are highly dilutive and easily manipulated by market makers and insiders. And it's easy for them to do so because these stocks have a market cap of usually under 100 million, some even as small as 20 million. And that's the dumb money that these people on the inside are trying to move. If you want to learn more about how these companies dilute and sell to their investors, check out these two other videos. Besides the psychology behind trading a trader and trading dumb money, the most important key takeaway from this book is to smash the like button if you haven't done so already. Seriously though, it's in the book. 
like this video by humble trader to get Lamborghini money. Besides liking my video, Quint also talks about how to set trading plans and the art of profit taking and taking losses. And most importantly, he says we should learn beyond just the basics of technical analysis and those overcrowded chart patterns. Instead, we should learn to take advantage when those basic chart patterns fail. There is just so much insight in this book, I highly recommend it. This book was a huge inspiration for my trader psychology and understanding market cycle videos. So if you've seen those videos and want to learn more about psychology, Trade the Trader is a must read. I'll put a link for this book down below. Now the second book I want to talk about is Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas, which I listened to on Audible. Mark Douglas is an expert in trading psychology, and he has coached traders from around the world on how to conquer the mental and emotional side of day trading. In the book, he aims to help you with trading consistency and understanding the mindset of a successful trader, which he describes as the zone. Just like professional athletes, great traders are not born, they are made. They are trained by following a strict mental and physical discipline and practice the same set of routine for years if not decades. When you are trading in the zone, buy and selling execution should be like a muscle reflex, an unemotional process in which you are just trading your plan that you already prepared before you enter the position. In the book, Mark talks about how to trade systematically and leaving your emotions outside the door. My biggest takeaway from trading in the zone is to manage my own emotions, especially when it comes to fear. It's the fear of the unknown. What if this support line fails to hold or what if this homework I had done on the stock the night before was wrong. I get so frustrated at myself when I hesitate due to fear. This happens sometimes even when I see a setup forming that I know I've traded thousands of times in the past and that can give me a high probability of success. And that psychological fear can come from maybe I took a loss the day before or maybe I just didn't get enough sleep last night. Fear can cause us to get into the trade too early or too late because you are scared of either missing out or being wrong. Secondly, fear can cause us to cut our winners short because we are scared of the stock changing direction soon. That's how sometimes we take profit for a small win, only to see the same trade that we are no longer in turn into a huge win minutes later according to our original plan. But perhaps the biggest damage fear can cause you is for you to turn a small loss into a huge loss 2-3 times bigger and blow up your account. Mark Douglas says that when you are trading with a fear of losing your money, that will lead you to hold on to your losing position too long even after your stop has been hit. And that holding and hoping mentality is what will lead to a big loss. And that concept is basically what I summarized in my risk management video. You need to find a max risk that you are very comfortable with losing. Maybe that's a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, whichever is suitable for your account. Mark tells us that you cannot let your fear or any other emotions to drive your decision making with your buy and sell. He says that we need to take full responsibility for whatever happens. The market isn't responsible for your wins and your losses, the market merely provides you with the opportunities and it's your own responsibility to partake only in the specific setups that you like. The market doesn't owe you anything. So that basically means if you're on the right side of a trade, great, hopefully that win is a lot bigger than your risk. And on the other hand, if it turns out to be wrong and you took that planned loss, you traded your plan and took responsibility for yourself and that's totally fine. But if you do not respect your own stop and give into fear and let that loss become 2-3 times bigger than your max risk, it's not the market's fault, it's not your chat room or DVD guru's fault either. And you certainly cannot blame it on your favorite day trading YouTuber who's making free videos for you to watch right now. Trading in the zone really changed the way I look at risk management. Rather than trading to avoid losing, the book taught me that I should accept that risk and choose the setups that's worthy of that risk. 
And that's how you execute your trades with no emotions. If you're struggling with controlling your risk and trading emotions, I highly recommend this book. The next book I also listened to on Audible is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is not a trading book per se, but it's a book that's helped me so much with my trading routine and trading discipline. In the book, James Clear teaches you how to create positive habits that's actually going to last. And to succeed in day trading consistency, you must have consistent day trading habits. From drawing out all your charts and doing your research before entering a trade, to waiting for confirmation for a bounce, to even just waking up at least 1-2 to two hours early before the market opens. Don't be that person who just crawl out of bed 10 minutes before the market opens and expect to make millions following chatroom alerts. I used to be that person actually. Atomic Habits give you many actionable tips to building a good trading habit that's going to last. The first one is to build a reward and punishment system for yourself. So when you do a good habit that you wish to keep, such as stopping out of a position when you're wrong, you are rewarded. And vice versa, when you make a mistake that you know it's a bad trading habit, such as chasing breakouts, there are negative consequences for it. Personally, one of my rewards in the past was that I get to watch an episode of Game of Thrones because I love that show. Until the series finale, of course, that was a disaster. What the f*** was that? And my form of punishment for making a bad habit was that I have to run an extra 10 minutes while I'm doing my workout. And I really hate running. But this was an extremely helpful exercise because that allows your mind to associate bad behaviors with negative consequences and good behaviors with positive outcomes. James Clear offered many more tips on how you can create a good routine, such as habit stacking and adding habit goals slowly to your list one by one. And also very importantly, journaling your process. Recording all your trades in a journal is absolutely crucial. And from that data is where you'll find out the strategies and the setups that you're really good at and you should focus on just those. And everything else is just noise and you should avoid altogether. If you don't have a trading journal yet, you can download one for free when you sign up to my mailing list below. You can also check out all the books I've talked about today in the links below. These are Amazon referral links and if you purchase anything through my link, I'll get a small, like very, very small percentage of commissions. And it's all going to my Lamborghini fund, of course. Or you can listen to the books on Audible like I did and sign up for a free 30-day trial. If you guys have any more trading book suggestions, let me know below because I'm always looking for more books to read. If you found this video useful, please remember to drop me a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching as always. I'm the Humboldt Trader and I'll see you guys next week.